Hello everyone, welcome back to Those YG Guys, I'm Alessandro. Yeah, it's been quite some time since we last seen... You have heard from me, basically. Um, yeah, I think the last video I've made was like on my birthday in October, so that was a while ago. So, after that video, I've taken a quite a bit of hiatus. Um, a lot of stuff in life happened, but I'll, I'll give an update video, um, giving you... a um, an idea of what was going on with me, and, and basically that's about it, but that's, that's going to come after this video, so stay tuned for that. But in this video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite events to watch, and, um, for those of you who know about me, or at least on this channel, I really do enjoy watching... Um, and reading coverage of the national, uh, national se season. Basically, national season is one of those things that I enjoy watching. And reading coverage is basically one of the things that get me so pumped up about. Um, it's kind of the, um, I don't, it's not really an accurate equivalent, um, um, comparison. But, we'll go with this. Um, think of it like, soccer where you have like um different events like the copa america the gold cup um the euro cup the world cup basically um it's kind of like that where um each area in different parts of the world holds its own national um basically like north american uh, wcq uh, south american wcq european um, Oceania, um, Japan, I know South Korea does it, um, Hong Kong, and still waiting to see what China is going to be, um, but yeah, so just, just to give you a, a little synopsis, uh, example, the, that's kind of like the idea of why I enjoy um, this time of the season of the game, in terms of the competitive nature of the game, this is one of the things I really enjoy. So this past weekend was the North American WCQ. Um, I know there was uh, quite a bit that has happened. That's, that's happened um, going um, days before going into the event, um, but I'll touch upon that along with what happened during the event um even though i did not attend the event i mean i i'll i'll touch upon it a little later in this video um so just to give you a heads up um so the guy who won uh the north american wcq 2016 his name is eric christensen right christensen uh I can't believe I tongue twist that, butchered that, I mean tongue twist that name a little bit, but hopefully I said that right, if not, sorry. Um, so he's the same duelist that has won YCS Dallas, um, am I correct on that one? I think so, yes. Um, back in um, last year, in fall 2015 with Infernoids. Um, so, he won with Domain Monarchs, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then along with him are five other duels. They're also qualifying for the World Championship Tournament um, that's coming out later in next month, I believe. So, um, they are Thomas Rowe, Admasu Williams Adam, or Adim, I think, uh, Travis Smith, Jimmy and Jung, uh, Jung Yin or well I think I butchered that last name horrendously I'm so sorry and Adam Hutchinson I mean Hutchins so those are our six represented duels for the North American uh, side of it so let's go down to the event itself so the North American WCQ I mean WCQ uh, holds its largest WCQ in history, 
which is 2,253 players attending the event, which is by far the largest, which that was like the biggest highlight they um, touch upon, which is pretty cool. Um, definitely uh, a very um, big turnabout. But we'll I'll talk a little bit more about that also in the uh, later in this video, which has other ties with another subject. But that's we'll get to that real quick. So here's is the top sixty four deck breakdown. So to start things off, twenty one is your Burning Abyss, uh, Phantom Knight. Uh, or you could say the PK Fire variant decks. Um, then we have 13 extra deck monarchs, 6 domain monarchs, 7 allies magician, 6 perform pal, uh, 5 demise cosmo, uh, 2 burning abyss monarchs, uh, 1 fire king cosmos, 1 pure cosmo. Uh, one Demise Cleavor and one Side Frame. So that is your top 64 breakdown. Um, so going to, I mean, looking at the results of the top 64 breakdown, um, we noticed that um, Burning Abyss or PK Fire variant decks has the highest representation. I mean, it's basically almost one third of it. Or roughly around it um, so that's pretty impressive uh, for the most part I mean while yes it's not like the high it doesn't put like the highest damage output ceiling compared with like monarchs and cosmos but it is by far the most consistent deck of the big major um, um, tier 1 status decks if you want to say. Um, so Domain Monarchs won the entire event and basically I have a feeling this is more like roughly like kind of a, a meta call ish you want to say. Um, now granted I know there's people who have discussed like you know uh, ex the difference between Extra Deck Monarch and Domain Monarch what Extra Deck Monarch what they provide like either it's like I heard like it's more consistent it give you like a higher ceiling output that kind of stuff which is I, I can't say much because I pick up um, three structure deck of uh, a few couple of cards and well of course I was like on a tight budget but I did play um, Domain Monarch and it was it was pretty good I just from um, play testing. Well, not really play testing against someone. It was more like um, do uh, solitaire plays. Just see how the uh, how the deck goes, and I can see where where the perks are going for the uh, domain monarchs. Um, but for domain monarchs, seeing that PK fire. Uh, Winning the last two YCS, um, which are like YCS Providence in Rhode Island, and of course YCS Origins in Columbus, Ohio, um, I wouldn't be surprised that was the main point of going to the event utilizing the Domain Monarch um, to counter against the probably the most consistent deck in the game. Uh, granted, um, like I said earlier. Um, that I, I still cannot say much about whether or not um, X deck Monarch is true, more consistent than Domain Monarch. But once um, Monarch gets stuff into the graveyard, like Pantheism and um, basically like um, the Prime Monarch stuff going in their graveyard, I mean, it's it's kind of like a snowball effect. It's Basically, once they get stuff going, then it's it's going to continue rolling down with a massive damage outputs coming out to you. Um, and with Domain locking out um, Burning Abyss from utilizing their extra deck, I mean, their their plays is kind of hinder 
to a very small amount now. I mean, their most or their majority high um, output ceiling is kind of lower severely because Domain Monarch, I mean, Domain of the True Monarch says, no, you cannot use an extra deck as long as I have no extra deck and control a tribute summon monster on my side of the field. So, going to the. Um, so, that's probably the whole main point of. From looking at perspective of how um, Domain Monarch winning this entire event. Um, before the event, I thought um, PK Fire was going to win. Uh, the tournament, um, namely because it's the most consistent one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised since it won um, nationals last year. I was like, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they win this year's, which it was close. I mean, it was the final between PK Fire versus Domain Monarch. Um, but yeah. Um, so. I didn't watch a whole lot of the stream battles, but I have watched a few, and they were pretty good. Um, the venue looks really nice from um, watching the stream. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, I think it was... I'm very glad to see um, a good turnabout for this event, and yeah. So, let's talk about the what kind of leads up to... Um, Going into the event, granted, I think this has been well known if uh, last week, basically, and if you've been under rock, basically, um, um, NAS, also known as Nihon Ad System, has uh, pulled the plug on dueling network, basically, um, and also they kind of stop um, YGO Pro f from you know for you to download YGO Pro on his main site. Now, granted, the servers are still up, but, um, but yeah, so, it kind of brought this whole stance, like, people have this, um, uh, premises thinking, like, um, Konami, well, NAS, Neon Ad System, which also, which people put, like, indirectly, that like Konami is trying to end online gaming for yu gi -Oh. And people, I've heard like crazy um, state uh, conclusion like because of this, you know, National is going to have a low turnabout and all that. And you know, one thing is for sure, one, and which explains why there's such a huge turnabout, like 2,253 players at the event. I mean, one, I mean, if you already book your reservation for your hotel, and went through all the training preparation for the event. I mean, why would you not go? And of course, this is like a one time in the, in a year. I mean, you won't get another opportunity until next year. And that's only happens like once yearly. Second of all, Yu-Gi-Oh for the man, um looking at the tier 1 state wise decks um this has been one of the most i wouldn't say the most but if not is definitely one of the more budget and side of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh in a long long time um like basically for for example monarchs buy three structure decks uh if you want to go with domain monarch that's pretty easy just utilize um um Buy three the Emperor Darkness structure decks. Um, buy a couple, few other cards like Desilos, um, maybe some staples, and you're good, basically. Um, and of course, if you want to go with Extra Deck Monarch, granted you have to spend a little bit more than Domain Monarch, but I mean, it's still not horrendous depending on which engine you're going with. Um, going about with the X deck monarch, whether you want to do the brilliant fusion engine or the um, let me see the super quantum engine or even the Ultimaya Zulkin variant X deck. I mean, that's 
one of those things. And Burning Abyss, majority of the cards have been reprinted. I mean, with the exception of Beatrice, but even she's not that expensive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, this is a time where Yu-Gi-Oh has been um, it's very cheap. I mean, due to also the amazing reprints from the uh, premium gold set and yeah, I mean, this has been a very budget um, meta, if you want to say. I mean, granted, there are a few expensive cards, but it wasn't as bad as compare like uh, Dragon Rulers and Spellbook of Judgment variant decks, or you want to play Necros, which <laughs> that's also expensive. I mean, it's been a while since we have a deck that is like that's a structure deck that is considered one of the best decks in the game. I mean, the last time we had something like that, excluding the 2014 national season because that's a bit more open-ended and even a decent deck could have the potential being to top and do well in the event. Um, the last time I would recall is probably... Um, I want to say Chaos Dragons because that was the, like the last time I seen like a structure deck that's considered the best. I mean, not to um, um, put any um, negative note on like Hero Structure Deck, Fire King Structure Deck, or any of that stuff. Um, well, but then you also have the Atlantean Structure Deck, but that's kind of like you only take like a small portion of the Atlanteans and Corporate with Murmurs, but. Taking a, a stretch deck by itself and add a few cards or two or so. I mean, Chaos Dragon was the last time I could re remember. I mean, granted, you could say, like, what about Tour Guide and stuff. Sometimes you could run Tour Guide. Other times you could get away without running Tour Guide. So, it's like, either here or there, if you have Future Fusion, Five-Headed Dragon at that time, then you pretty much are good. But that's besides the point. Um, so... Yeah, um, this is a good uh, sign of indicator for Yu-Gi-Oh's, especially with that huge turnabout. Um, also, and now let's touch upon the last point, which I'm kind of glad I kind of hold off this video until I want to hear what happened. Um, if you know that Konami did not stream the semifinals and the finals of the North American WCQ 2016. Of course, people got really mad, made videos, um, kind of like in a rant state. Um, but of course, I ca I'm glad I waited and watched uh, Cordero's video, also known as Vexkiss4666, um, for who did attend the event and ex and did notify in his video, you know, basically the Twitch stream, there's like, they're on like a, a set time under contract, so they can't go past it. I mean, that's one point of the story. Um, on top of that, there were like um, a lot going to time. And on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, 2,253 players attend the event. Um, you know this is not going to start things like on time and for what I've heard it started um, a couple hours there was like a couple hour delay I mean, it was supposed to start from what I heard at 11 but it started at 1 p.m. because people still had to making the deck lists and all that well basically if you didn't do uh, during your pre-registration fr on Friday then it's kind of like yeah so the line was a nightmare, and then, yeah. So here we go. Um, people were probably going to say, like, well, why didn't Konami prepare or something? Well, guess what? No one could foresee something, a big turnabout in this event to at all. No, I'm not being paid by Konami. This is basically um, seeing, like, uh, coordinate a big event. Uh, I remember back when I was in... Uh, college as an undergraduate 
Um, I've seen my friends who are like officers of club, they try to organize an event um, in the area kind of close to the university area, um, make reservation. And of course, we have to, they have to do like sign uh, contract of set time periods. We're going to be there from this time period to that time period on these days. That, that sort of thing. So, of course, that's kind of how things go about things. So, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about it. Um, I'm looking forward to um, the Euros, uh, WCQ, coming up this weekend. Um, so, this should be fun. So... We'll talk a little bit more like what to predict, what will happen, do the results after Euro WCQ, like what decks have the most potential, probably will get touch or so forth. But yeah, I mean, overall, pretty, I'm not surprised with the big turnabout with Burning Abyss since they won the previous two YCS events I've mentioned earlier. And Monarchs being so budget, I mean, would you really, I mean, g give me a fact, would you want to spend a whole lot of money on a tier 1 deck, and then you have another deck that's like, much more budget, but about the same status as the more expensive deck. I mean, I would, I mean, you ask me, I'll choose the cheaper deck, I mean, that's just me. But, yeah, um... So, I guess that wraps up this North American WCQ uh, information video. Um, it's very, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, definitely good to be back. Um, yeah, stay tuned for that update video because that, that will explain like where, why have I been on a hiatus lately. So, yeah. So, stay tuned and I'll catch you guys later. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.